Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you another reading vlog. Welcome to a slightly different angle of my reading room. I now have a desk and a chair. I'm working from home for the foreseeable and also it was about time that I set this up so that I could actually work in here. Today is Friday the 13th. Ooh, spooky. I hadn't even realised. The reason I'm making a vlog for this week's video is because what I want to do is film a review, a full proper review of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which I finished yesterday. But we have someone staying in this room tomorrow. I don't really like filming in other rooms and I don't want to boot her out so that I can be like, please let me film my booktube video. What I'm going to do instead is film some clips of me reading Marissa Mayer's Supernova, which is the third book in the Renegade series. Is it a bad idea doing a reading vlog of the third book in a series? Probably, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's my channel and I can do what I want. So if you haven't heard of this series, this is Marissa Mayer's series about superheroes. The overarching theme is one of anarchy versus whatever the opposite of anarchy is. I'm not sure. Put that here. We have the main character Nova, who's a double agent working for the villains who trains up to be a recruit in the like main good people superhero group. And it's really, really good. I really enjoyed the first one. I read that a couple of years ago. Read the second one last year. Very much enjoyed that. That's Renegades and then Arch Enemies. And this is the third book which I got for my birthday. This came out late last year, I think. Blanket spoiler alert for books one and two. I am going to be talking about some stuff that happens in those. If there are any spoilers for book three in this vlog, I will put skippy clips so that you can skip past them. Yeah, as I say, I'm working today, so I don't anticipate getting a huge amount of reading done until lunchtime. But I am at chapter five. I've just got to the start of chapter five and things are good. My predictions are, well, they're not really predictions. We know we're gonna have identity reveals in this book. So that's going to happen at some point. I suppose it's a case of whether they come really close to the end or whether they are more midly bits. They didn't happen right at the beginning, which is what I was considering. I'm also interested to see where the romance goes because I think that'll be impacted a lot by identity reveals, maybe? Looking forward to it. This is quite hefty. It's about 500 pages, but let's get to reading. I'll keep you updated. I'll check in with you when I next do some reading. When the working day is done, girls just want to make reading vlogs. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, hello, I am now. I'm 104 pages in, I've just got to the start of chapter 11, and we've had the first identity reveal. So the next kind of segment is presumably going to be the processing the denial of that, and then the reveal of that, and dealing with all that stuff. But yeah, it came earlier than I expected. When it didn't happen in the first few chapters, I was like, oh, okay, they're gonna leave this to be like the mid, mid book turning point moment. But no, chapter 10 is pretty early on. It's good so far. I like Marissa Mayer's writing. I know that some people don't enjoy her books and I think they're not necessarily groundbreaking, but I kind of don't need them to be. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I have to say. Um, yes, I'm, I'm done with work now, hence why I've been able to do some reading. The sun is going down. I have to finish kind of tidying this room. I've done a fair amount. There's kind of a pile of stuff behind me but you know, what can you do? And I also just sort of need to generally get a bit of a handle on the house because working from home I just make mess, I just produce mess. But I'm gonna keep reading for a bit, I'm gonna have another cup of tea and I'll be back with another check-in a bit later. I have a feeling this reading vlog, if I want to finish this today, I have a feeling we're gonna go pretty late so get ready to stay up with me. <laughs> Good morning, it is day two of my supernova reading vlog. I know I said I was going to try and finish this book yesterday and I had every intention to do so, but then I ended up going out with some friends, which I think is a good thing. Day two, where did I get to yesterday? I read a bit more before we left and then did not film my vlog clip because I'm a bad person. I'm at page 310, so chapter 30. So what's happened? Well, a fair amount of stuff. Edit and Judith will put in the spoiler awards warnings. I expect I'm just gonna have to spoil the warning this whole section. So we've had the identity reveal, we've had the denial, we've had the unbearable stuff, and then we had an interesting time where they kind of just ignored all of that, and maybe they're gonna have to do it again. It's definitely the end of a series. There's 200 pages left, and I feel like they've undone, I don't know, it's complicated. I'm trying to work out what I feel about it. We had the identity reveal that three books have been building to, and then, the spoiler is that a basically they make it so that Nova is innocent of the crimes of being Nightmare. I find that so odd because she's still then having to lie and you know at what point does she come clean in this story and is that enough time to undo some of the negative feeling or is that gonna be the book? Are we gonna just have the, a romance that's been building for three books that's not 
there anymore. I'm intrigued. I don't know. And we've still got other identity reveals to come, which are being set up, you know, and as I say, there's probably only 200 pages left, which I know is a lot, but there's a lot else to finish off in this book. I don't know. It's interesting choices being made, I guess, is my thinking. And I'm sure they make sense within the story. And I'm sure when I finish it, I'll be like, oh yeah, of course, that's a completely logical way to conclude that. But I feel a bit like it's been written into a corner. But again, maybe that's the thing is you have to do unexpected things with things that you've had your readers expecting since book one. In a set amount of time, I have to go get on a train because I'm going to go and see Justine and Asha, which would be very lovely. I will be back this evening, probably not in this room because we will have somebody else in this room. And if I'm still not done, then I will see you again on Sunday. I'll be checking in soon. <laughs> this whole vlog has been shot from this angle. I've stopped caring. Finished, done. It's 10 past 10 on Saturday morning. It went much quicker than I thought it was going to, reading those last kind of 200 pages. It's a quick read. It feels very long, holding it, but it's actually, yeah, it's fairly light, easy going. Rosemary stuff. I have some thoughts. First thought is you can either be a prodigy because of you're born with your powers and that's just sort of fine. Unclear whether that's genetic or not. I can't remember, probably in an earlier book or they can develop or be triggered kind of thing by some trauma in your past. So that kind of like villain origin story thing. And this book has, I'll put a trigger warning on the screen. Like there's one guy who's like, yes, I was molested when I was a child uh, and now uh, that made me a villain, but I'm not a villain anymore. And you're just like, where, A, hey, this came out of nowhere. And I, it's not going into detail about it, but it's just very jarring as a, a thing. And also, fractionally problematic to say, you, you know, bad things happen to you as a child and then you become a villain. Admittedly, some people become heroes, but then if your whole series is about what is it to be a hero, what is it to be a villain, are we all heroes, are everyone heroes in their own eyes, but you're also all villains, I don't, I don't know, it didn't sit quite right with me. And maybe that's me overanalyzing it, but yeah, I think possibly a slightly problematic take and just could have been left out, wouldn't have damaged a book at all to just be like, won't address that. It's like three pages. Identity reveals did not happen in the way I thought they would throughout this book. It felt like a few kind of missed opportunities, like you set something up and then don't use it. There are some really good kind of plot twisty, plot reveal things that I genuinely didn't see coming throughout the whole series and that was really really interesting. Although one of them which I won't talk about because it's a fairly big spoiler, I feel that they could have done more with and I think part of the problem is the character that it's about doesn't get the kind of page time that they need. The romance is kind of fine. It's always a bit complicated doing a romance that involves a lot of duplicity kind of from the get. How is that going to work long term? If you hear any noises behind me that's somebody else waking up. But also it's a superhero book, like is that the genre that it doesn't matter? I don't know. Yeah the other thing this book does and it's a tiny bit of a spoiler for book two, we have the development of Agent N which stops you having superpowers. That plays into this book a lot which I think we expected. It was such a big kind of plot point and this idea of taking away powers being such a violation but also kind of necessary in some situations, but who gets to decide that it's necessary? And I thought the way this book did that was really good. I think the kind of final conclusion of that sort of thing was a little bit simultaneously very predictable, arguably quite clever. It kind of depends, it's sort of two sides of the same coin. It's clever in that it solved the problems that the book kind of set up, but didn't feel particularly interesting. I I'm, I didn't mm, mm, wasn't entirely sold on the last kind of couple of chapters, just those final tying together of things. And the epilogue, again, not gonna spoil it for you, but in a book series that Marissa Mayer's other books really do end quite hopefully. Uh, all of the Lunar Chronicles end, each one ends quite hopefully, uh, except probably the first one? I would argue the Renegades trilogy, the books one and two don't end particularly hopefully because they've set up all of this stuff and it's much more, it's much less contained than the Lunar Chronicles books are. But this is the end of a trilogy, an end of a YA trilogy, and to end it not entirely hopefully and not entirely positively, like it's just the epilogue that this happens in, was just a bit of a choice. I don't know, I, maybe I like it, maybe it's a good look at what's reality, reality in a superhero book. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I suppose really the conclusion is did I have a good time reading it? And the answer is yes, I really did. I enjoyed this a lot. Th I think this is a series you could reread quite easily, similarly to the Lunar Chronicles, like it's just kind of chill. Yeah, it's a good superhero book. There aren't that many superhero way books out there that are very good, because I read the Batman book and oh that was terrible, oh not good at all. Should you read this? Should you read this whole series? I think if you like YA and you want a good YA superhero book I think these are 
good examples of that. They have a lot of tropey stuff that's good fun, uh, and yeah, it's a good end to a trilogy. If you enjoyed this very, very boring one viewpoint vlog, uh, let me know, comment, like, subscribe, that really helps me out. You can also follow me on all of my socials, they will be linked in the description below, along with links so you can buy copies of the books if you'd like them. They are affiliate links, so I make a tiny bit of money. You don't have to shop with them if you don't want to. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one.